that's a brand new TBM 940. You're right. You're thinking, that probably only has 70 hours of flight time on it. Why are you doing a paint correction to it? Well, let me tell you. We're here to ceramic coat this airplane so it stays looking new and so it's easier to clean and so it's protected from that PT6 exhaust. And for the coating to properly stick, we still have to do a paint correction. That's going to refine that surface. It's going to make sure it's clean, uniform, ready to accept that coating. Now, even with the new airplane, we can still show an improvement in gloss. It's subtle, but it's measurable. Um, and there's actually, there's areas on the plane where there's a little bit of swirls and scratches and things like that just throughout the delivery process. They, they fly these planes across the Atlantic to the U.S. So, um, you know, they get dirty, they get exposed to stuff. Paint correction is going to make it look just that much better and then we coat it so it stays looking that way. So this is day two. I came in yesterday, um, got polishing, got the whole fuselage polished. Today um, I, I wasn't filming a whole lot yesterday because it was really noisy. There's rain hitting the hangar roof and there's jets outside. Uh, so not a lot of footage from yesterday. Today um, all that rain, it's pretty humid. And because the airframe is still cold, it, there's actually moisture condensing on the body. So we're going to wait for it to heat up a little bit, or, or for that body to heat up a little bit, so we don't have water while we're trying to coat. That's a big problem, actually. Um, while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to continue polishing the underside, polishing the wings, and uh, we'll touch base at some point during coating. So here we have new paint, unpolished, and it looks good, right? looks perfect. Let's put a tape line down and see. So we're just going to do a quick one step polish here with hyper polish and a yellow pad. Wipe it off and we're going to take gloss measurements. So we're going to take three measurements on the left, three on the right. Left of the yellow arrow is unpolished. Again, no visible paint defects here. We're getting a reading of 91.5, 91.7, in 91.9. Now on the right hand side, 92.8, little improvement, 92.7, and once again, 92.7. So we got a one point improvement, big deal. But the thing is, I notice, owners notice, that their brand new airplane is shinier. It's got more of a presence on the ramp. And that's from, again, that, that paint correction just refines the surface and gets it as glossy as possible. Now, if there are paint defects, yes, those will come out. So here's some really deep sanding marks, and we did a little bit more aggressive paint correction on it, and you can see all but the deepest scratches came out. Um, I didn't want to risk burning through his clear coat here, so that's why I didn't go super, super aggressive. But when we overlay the before and after, you can see that there's a good amount of defect removal and that's going to help improve the appearance of the aircraft. So this is the panel wiping step. Um, I'm wiping the surface with a strong alcohol solution and what that does, it, it takes out any polishing oils or um, you know any, any kind of residue that might be on that paint. So. We got a good clean surface to coat on, but also uh, polishing oils can actually conceal some types of paint defects. So by pulling out the oils, I can make sure that this surface is as perfect as I want it to be and uh, make sure I didn't miss any spots. So it, it's just nice to go over the plane one more time after paint correction, before coating, before we lock in uh, that paint condition. So the coating is applied as a liquid. So we get some product on the applicator and wipe it on. I kind of like to work in sections here. So we start up here, go down, across, back up. Get it spread in nice and even. Then if we walk away from this in this condition, it'll dry like this and we have to sand it off. So it's really important to wipe it off and get it leveled. For that, I just use microfiber towels. Use two of them. And that first towel, because it's doing all the wiping, it gets really saturated. So use a second towel 
to get the excess uh, coating off. And then uh, rinse and repeat. So the uh, fuselage is fully coated, vertical stabilizer, horizontal stabilizer, all of that is done. So now it's on to the wings. It's actually quite a bit later too. This, this takes a long time. Uh, movie magic doesn't show that. Now on the wings I'm doing a one step correction on almost all of it except that little inboard section where all the exhaust sits. So I notice there's about a foot and a half where there's just more scratches. So we're going to do a more aggressive uh, cut there. So I'm going to use a wool pad, dual action, and the last cut compound. And I'll actually do a little tape line so you can see what that looks like. Um, it just needs a little bit more aggression there to, to erode away those scratches. That way once we coat it, we're not locking that in. And we actually have a smoother surface too. So those scratches do increase the surface area and make it harder to clean because there's more spots for stuff to get trapped. So. Um, let's put down some tape and I'll uh, do a test spot for you. So we got a gloss meter here. Let's see if we can quantify the difference in shine. And basically this just measures how much of the light hitting the surface reflects back out. So the tape line is right here, so right above it here. So we really got a good polish in here. I'm more careful when I'm close to the tape, so we'll measure it a little further down. 93.7. 93.7. Okay, so we'll say 93.85. Um, so there's a definite few point improvement there. Now the downside of doing a tape line like that is that you have a pretty solid before and after, so you kind of have to get after it a little bit harder to even out that line. And uh, you can see for aggressive compounding, I like to use the last details, the last cut. Um, you don't use very much of it. It's pretty aggressive and it doesn't dust. Now, the, even though this is a diminishing abrasive polish, meaning if you work it long enough, it'll actually produce a very fine finish. Because I'm using a more aggressive wool pad, um, there's a chance of leaving behind micro marring, so kind of a dull haziness after compounding. So 
In this case, it's actually faster to just wipe up the polish residue and then switch to a yellow pad and use hyper polish again to finish out that surface and make sure we're not leaving behind any kind of marring or hazing and really just boost that gloss. Good morning, day three, Sunday. Um, last night I got the top of this wing coated. The other side's polished, so that's kind of where we left off. Um, I only had 30 minutes before this place was closing, so I very quickly coated this side, and I just didn't have enough time to do anything else because I don't like the start-stop uh, coating. So I'm gonna coat the right side wing. Then I actually saved you guys a little bit of dirt underneath the right wing, so you can see what the cleaning process looks like for that. But then I'm gonna polish the underside of the wings to get those coated. So plate's looking really good. It's almost done. The sun's actually shining in the hangar, so it, it's just dripping wet with shine. Check it out. So here's some strategies for uh, dealing with the underside here. This is super dirty and it's not coated yet, so we're, I'm gonna show you the most aggressive way to do it first, then I'll show you some other methods. Um, actually, we'll start with least aggressive. So we got W5 citrus degreaser um, in a pump spray at about a one to 20 concentration. So you get some foam and you can agitate it on, let it sit. You can see it's not really doing very much. This is about 70 hours of exhaust is our estimate here. Um, if the plane was coated, this would do the job. So you're not spraying up chemicals. Um, it, it's very controlled and you're not making a big mess. Now let's, let's escalate this. So we're gonna take a little bit of no rinse just to get the surface wet. And then we're gonna take, at this, in this case, it's 100% citrus cleaner. Um, you can probably use it at a 1 to 10 as well, but we got a lot of mess here. I'm gonna get that residue off. And uh, you just have to work at it in layers. You can see it's slowly starting to come off. What I'm trying to avoid is having to do this. Because when you spray like that, now you get it all over the floor, all over your camera, um, it just gets messy. But I don't have the patience to start layering away at it. So there we go. You can see it's starting to break down quite nicely. Make sure you wear eye protection. It's coming along quite well. So we kind of went from most gentle to most aggressive, and in this case, it just needed to be aggressive. But once it's coated, you uh, you won't have to do this. You, you start with the 
less aggressive method. And also, this stuff dries, so if you just went for a flight and you wipe it off, it's gonna come off a lot easier than if you're waiting two or three days um, with the exhaust dries and it gets more stubborn. Now also, after you use the citrus, go back over it with the no rinse just to get that soap residue off. Especially on a coated plane, the soap is sticky, relatively speaking, so water and, and soot are gonna stick to the soap and the coating can't do its job because it's covered up. Take the soap off, coating is, new, is now the new top layer and it can do its job much better. Done. Everything's polished, everything's coated. I have to check out of my hotel in 45 minutes and I'm flying out later today so I'd really quite like to take a shower. Um, so I'm gonna go take a shower, check out of my hotel and then uh, pack everything up here and get on out of here. Thanks for watching, enjoy the beauty shots.